everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have a great little tutorial for you today. I hope you really like this. If you want more tutorials like this and you want to help out my channel, please give it a thumbs up. I've been promising a tutorial on how to merge two Designs by Juju machine embroidery files into one and make an adorable little wall hanging birth announcement. This is two separate files. This is the Designs by Juju mini wall desk set. This is number four. I will link to all of this below in the description box. And it is also a birth announcement. I'm using Embrilliance Essential Software to do this. And if you don't have Embrilliance yet, I highly recommend you take a look at it. It is very reasonably priced for embroidery software and it's very, very easy to use, and you'll see that in this tutorial. I've got links to all of this below. This is just such an easy design. It allows you to merge two files into one. I'm gonna show you how to manipulate the designs to get rid of stitches that you don't need, add stitches that you do need, and then finish out the project. If you've never heard of Embrilliance, it is a third-party embroidery software. It works with every type of embroidery machine because it will save in every embroidery machine format. You download it to your computer and then you can just get started and make all these great little projects and then save to a USB stick or send it wirelessly to your machine in your machine's format and you're ready to go. So I'm not going to sit here and chatter the whole time. Let's get started. To make this design, you're going to want to merge two designs into one in the Embrilliance Essentials software. You can do all of this with Embrilliance Essentials. So what you're seeing here is a combination of the mini wall desk set number four and the birth announcement merged into one design. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's open a new design. And in Embrilliance, you come up to this top menu and you hit this little white icon right here with a star and that's new. I am going to be making the design that will fit in the 8x8 template. So I need a hoop large enough for that. And to change the hoop size in Embrilliance, you just come up here to Edit and Preferences. And under the Environment folder, there's hoops. And depending on the type of machine that you use, you can click this drop down arrow and you can choose any one of these design file types. I have a Brother Luminaire, so I am using PES. And in here, it will list all of the hoops that are available for Brother and Baby Lock. For the 8x8 design, the closest hoop size that I have that will work for that is the 9 by 14 and as you scroll down in these hoops like if you're not sure what size a, a 360 by 200 really is you can click on it and it'll tell you right down here underneath it'll give you an approximate inches so you know if that hoop will work for you or not but I'm using my 9 by 14 and I'm gonna click apply and click OK if you wanted to create a new hoop you can click new and you can make another one and customize it for what you want. So now I'm in the 9 by 14 hoop. When you're making this design, you want to use the fabric requirements and all of the instructions for the mini wall desk set. So I'm going to come here to my file folder in my bottom taskbar and open it up and I file my designs under a folder in my documents called embroidery. And in embroidery, I have everything filed by folder that I created and I file my designs much like a card catalog by subject. So I'm going to come all the way down here to wall art. And here is the mini wall desk set number four. I need the PES version. Inside of this design file, there are three different sizes. You have a 5x7, the 6x10, and the 8x12. The size I want to make is the 8x12, but also you have 
the different designs that come with the file. So this has, you know, this is my happy place and, and all of that. I don't want that one. They all come with something called blank and that's what I want. And that allows you to put your own design on there. So I'm just going to move this window down a little bit and I'm going to grab this one design, click on it and drag it. And you'll see a little plus sign show up into the Embrilliance field. And if you let go, there it is. And I'm going to minimize this. Now let's take a look at the design and see what it is made up of. And you can tell over here in the objects panel, if you click this plus sign, you can now see each color stop that is part of the design. There is your placement line. And you can see it kind of highlights over here. This is your placement line for your batting. There's your tack down for your batting. There's your placement line for your main fabric. There's the tack down for your main fabric. Here's the placement line for your accent fabric. There's the tack down line for your accent fabric. There's your cross hatching. I don't want the cross hatching on the birth announcement. I think that's going to make it too busy. That's me personally. If you want to leave it, you can but I'm going to get rid of this. Let's continue down and I will show you what else. There is your uh, satin stitch to cover the raw edges. That is a little motif stitch that's right on top of that satin stitch. And there is your final stitch that creates the envelope back. Okay, so like I said, I do not want the cross hatching. Now, if you click here in the design, it just selects everything and you can tell because everything over here is highlighted. That's not what I want. So I'm going to click off of it and I'm just going to click on the one for the cross hatching and I'm going to hit delete. So now I have a plain wall hanging that's ready for me to customize with the birth announcement. Again, I'm going to go to my folder down here on the bottom. And I'm just going to appear at the top. I'm just going to go backwards to embroidery. And I'm going to scroll up to birth announcements. And I want DBJJ Floral Girl Birth Template PES. I'm going to open that. Let me point out something about the birth announcements themselves. I've got this one over here. I'm going to click over on this other tab up here on the top. And this is the deer birth announcement. Look at the deer and the antlers come up and cover in and it, it kind of cuts into the accent fabric at the top. Now you could grab this and lower it a little bit and you could probably get it to fit, but look how close you're coming down here to this lower line. So you want to be careful about the type of birth announcement that you choose. You need to make sure that the birth announcement that you choose is not going to be in any kind of conflict unless you want to do that. You certainly can, but I don't recommend doing that. You're going to get a lot of bulky stitches right there. Let me click the view button and make them bigger. Now, the reason you can see these that they look like pictures is because I have a utility from Embrilliance called Thumbnailer on my system. And Thumbnailer allows you to see your design files as if they were pictures, like in your pictures folder. And inside of the birth announcement templates, you have AM metric 5x7, AM metric 6x10, AM metric 8x8. And then it goes to AM universal 5x7, universal 6x10, etc. So what you need to pay attention to is whether it is AM or PM, universal or metric, and then the size. And I need the AM universal eight by eight. So I'm going to pull that in here and let go. And it will automatically center in the hoop. The only thing we do not need in this portion of the design is the outside boundary. This black line you see here, that's the outside boundary. So I'm going to come over here and click on the plus sign. And I'm going to highlight the boundary and I'm going to hit delete. Now the boundary is gone. And now what I need to do is I need to bring the design straight down to allow me some room to put the name right above this 
part. So I'm going to uh, click on this and I'm just going to hit the down arrow key and that way it will move straight down. If I use my mouse, it might wiggle around. Almost think of it as an invisible line right where this turn, this curve starts right here. So there's an invisible line right there. And I've got enough room up here for the name and I've got enough room down here for the date. I think this will work just fine. You could even make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to. I'm going to drag it out just a little bit. Move it over so that my my black handles are centered on the zero line. And maybe I'll put these black handles so that they are centered on that line as well. That looks good. I think that that'll look really nice. So now we need to customize the birth template. You can use all kinds of different fonts for the name and whatnot. And in order to put a name, you come up here to the A, click A, create letters and you automatically get the block font that shows up as default. And that block font is part of the Embrilliance Essentials software. And to change it, I'm going to hit the down arrow and I have all kinds of fonts installed in here. I want to go to DBJJ's Evangeline one inch and you can see it change right here. And to change the letters, I'm just going to highlight them in the text box and I'm going to type Logan's name. And hit enter. There it is. Now I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to condense this just a little bit more. Bring it in. The smaller you start with, the better your stitch out will be if you need to make it smaller. So you will get a lot of distortion or it won't go small enough if you start with say a, a one and a half inch and go down. Watch your descenders and make sure that they don't get in the way of anything. You want to make sure that your everything up here isn't going to cross over. Actually, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. To make the numbers, one of the things you need to be aware of when, when you're typing, making letters, is punctuation. Not every font will have punctuation in it. Most of Design by Juju's fonts, they do contain punctuation, but a lot of fonts don't. For instance, let's say you don't have any purchased fonts and you only have the basics that come with Embrilliance. If I were to choose Bauhaus, this is a font that comes with Embrilliance Essentials. She was born at 8.10 a.m. So if I type in 8 colon 10 and hit enter, you can see there's no colon here because punctuation is not included with the Bauhaus font. However, if I go to the block font and use that, now you see the colon. So that's really important when you go to choose a font, you want to make sure that you choose one that has got punctuation in it. This font you can actually make a lot bigger with very little distortion. It's designed to do that. That looks real good, just like that. So you want to go through and continue making all of the edit changes that you would want. Now what I recommend is when it gets to inches, pounds, and ounces, that you make each one of those a separate object. So I will click on the A, I'm going to use the block, and I want to, I want to put 20.5 for the inches and hit enter. Now I want all three of these to be the same size. So I'm going to click the 20.5 and come up here in the top. Make sure your lock is on for the scale. And I'm going to change this to 150, 150.0 and hit enter. That's going to bring that down. 
I'm going to click the 7 and change it to 150. And the 6 and change it to 150. Okay, now I want them all lined up. So I'm going to make sure my 6 is highlighted. I'm going to hit the control key and click the 7 and hold down the control key and click the 20.5. See how they're not aligned horizontally? Now I'm going to come up here to the align and distribute. And I want to center these horizontally and click apply. Perfect. Close. That looks pretty good. I like that. How big is my 810? 153. Let's make this 150 as well. There we go. Now all of the customization of my numbers are the same. Need to do the same thing for the date. I think that's nice. So we're almost all finished with the customization. We need to do one last thing though. Remember this bottom stitch. The last stitch in the wall hanging is the stitch that makes the envelope back. Well, we need that last. What I'm going to do is not on the letters, but over here, this is actually a picture. Grab it here and drag it and hover it over until it begins to scroll and get all of the letters out of the way. There we go. 2019 was the last one. Hover it over the last one and that will put it below so that this will stitch out last. Now we have all of the elements of the wall hanging minus the cross hatching. That looks good. And then once this is finished, it's going to jump into the base design for the birth announcement and here's the name and the time and the weight and this looks good and then the final stitch all right we're ready to go and if you have the brother luminaire or the baby lock solaris you will come up to utility and click on send to solaris xp1 i am going to call this logan and click ok and the file's been sent to the machine and we're ready to go stitch it out. If you have to save it to a USB, when you go to save it, 
you'll come up here and go File, Save Stitch File As. Mine defaults to PES because that's what I use, but you can hit the down arrow and you can save it to whatever file extension your machine uses. They're all here. That's why they say that this works with every kind of embroidery machine. To make this project, you're going to want to follow the fabric requirements in the desk set or wall hanging. So I'm using my 9x14 hoop that will accommodate the 8x8 desk set wall hanging. And I have two pieces of poly mesh stabilizer in here. My single piece was not wide enough, so I just layered them. If you have to do that, that's okay. That's a nice little workaround if you don't have anything that's wide enough to go uh, and accommodate your hoop. You need one piece of batting. You need one piece of top fabric. You need the accent fabric at the top. You're going to need two tabs if you want to hang it. And then you're going to need two pieces of fabric to make the envelope back. And if you're using directional fabric, please keep that in mind as you go to put it on. For your batting, I'm using a white fabric as a background, and I chose a fairly light piece of batting that was going to work for me. If you're batting, if you have a light background and your batting is darker, you may want to use two pieces of fabric so that the, the color of the batting does not change the color of the... Uh, top fabric. Also, if the, the directions recommend warm and natural, I would caution you against using a poly. If you're using light color fabric, see how you can see the grid lines of the, this is my quilting uh, grid for pantographs underneath. See how you can see through that? If your fabric is very light colored, if you use a poly batting, keep in mind you might be able to see the thread knots from the embroidery through the fabric and the batting as well. So I don't recommend a poly batting for this. You want something that's a little bit more opaque. And even this you can see through, but if I put the fabric over it, uh, I think it'll be fine for the any of the knots underneath. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you need to do, you want to hoop your stabilizer and your very first stitch is going to be a placement line for your batting. Then you want to put your batting down so that it completely covers all of the stitch placement line by at least one half inch all the way around. If your batting has little bumps, you want to put the bumpy side down and then tack it down. Now the machine will create a placement line for your main fabric that will be the cover. You'll notice I have not done a thread color change. You want to put your main fabric down and be sure to cover the upper tips of this scallop line by at least half an inch. If your fabric is directional, pay attention to that and it, this is the top and this is the bottom. So just you want that right side up and stitch that down. Remove the hoop from the machine you want to take a pair of curved embroidery scissors. Embroidery scissors, are these are wonderful. These are by Ginger. I recommend if you buy these, you don't go cheap. You want to get good ones so that they don't hurt your fingers. These will prevent you from cutting the stitching. They have like a rounded shape to the bottom of them. You want to trim just above the stitch line on the upper scallop. I'm going to kind of come down straight from the top just like that. Put the hoop back in the machine. 
and now it's going to stitch the upper placement line for your accent fabric up here. Take your accent fabric and completely cover the top portion. You're going to trim away from the bottom down here after it does the tack down stitch. So make sure you have enough fabric to cover the bottom of the scallop and all the way up to the top. If your fabric's directional, pay attention to that and you want this face up. Remove your hoop from the machine and we're going to trim the bottom of the scallop only. Time for a thread color change. Time for the accent stitch. We've finished the main stitch out and there's one stitch left and that is the uh, the final stitch that's going to go all the way around to create the envelope back. I need to put the little tabs on for the hanging tabs and I want to make sure since my fabric is directional these stripes go from upper left down to lower right so I want my tabs to do the same thing so that it has a nice uniform look and to do that I'm just going to measure in oh I don't know I'm going I'm just going to kind of wing it here so when you have directional fabric for your tabs you want to place them as they would look right and then flip them top to bottom like this and I'm going to put them up about that high, about a half an inch over the top of the stitch line. So I'm going to tape it down. And I'm gonna do the same measurement on this side. You want to take your two pieces of fabric that are folded right sides out, wrong sides together to create the envelope back and um, I need to put the bottom one on first and make sure that the stitching here at the bottom of the wall hanging is covered by about half an inch. And I'm gonna take a couple more pieces of tape and just um, secure this so it doesn't shift. Now, on this one, what you need to do is where this stitching line is, you want to run a piece of tape just over that, where that's gonna go, so that as the foot travels, it doesn't get caught right there. So on both sides, Kind of get an eyeball of where that is and tape that down. There. I think I'm doing that right. If I'm not, no big deal. My brain, it's early. My brain isn't working. Now everything is pretty secure and should stay put for the final stitch. finished. Time to trim it up. And you want to take your ruler and trim to about a quarter of an inch on all sides. I'm going to make it just a little bit wider on the top because of the tabs. About three-eighths on the top. On the bottom, measure from the lowest point And then you want to take your scissors and you want to trim those outer corners 
and cut it a 45 to the to the corner and turn. I'm going to use my clover point to point turning tool and that's going to this edge right here is going to really smooth out that rounded bottom very nicely. Oh my tabs are facing the right way that's good. Time to press it. Now is the time that you can get in and get rid of any little jump threads that you might have like these right here when a when a stitch goes from one point to another it's called a jump thread and sometimes the digitizing is not set for it to cut automatically what you can do the easiest way to get rid of jump threads is think about how the stitch went from point A to point B. Well, you want to trim point B first because that's where the pull is coming from. So see how it, if you trim point B first where the stitch went, this, the thread, I don't know if you can see this, the thread will pop straight up and gives you a real good little uh, ability to either grab it or trim it. It's hard to do with one hand. And it'll trim nice and clean. This is where a pair of tweezers comes in very handy. And you can get a hold of that and trim it right at the bottom and make it nice and clean. When you're ironing, you don't want this bottom edge, uh, the back side, to show from the front. So a lot of times I'll flip it over and just kind of give it some encouragement of where I would like it to go before I start. And I'm going to use a clapper. Oh, that's very nice. See how you can't see that edge down there now. A clapper, if you don't have one, a clapper is a tailor's tool. Been around forever. It's an untreated piece of wood, and there is something about the untreated wood that absorbs the heat and the moisture, and it just makes the cleanest, nicest seam finishes. It's a garment sewing tool, and it's wonderful for these kind of projects to give you nice flat seams. Oh yeah, that's very nice. I'm not using steam on this side. I'm using a piece of silk organza, another tailor's tool. It can really take heat as a nice pressed cloth. I'm going to be using an Ackfeld uh, wire hanger and it'll go with the gift. I'm just going to leave it in the package and ship it like that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. We love to have new subscribers. We also have a Facebook group and would love to see your projects that you're making. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.